this is going to be my first semi lecture on some blood banking stuff specifically with regard to how to read and interpret an antibody panel i'm not quite sure how this is going to go because this is my first one but i'm going to try to explain this with a screen recording behind it when we are looking at an antigram this is what we call an antigram this thing on the screen on this left hand side i'm going to highlight this in yellow these are each of the cell numbers so it's a panel of 11 different reagent red blood cells the next column i'm going to highlight it in like another yellow color this is what we learn in school this is your uh fisher race designation fisher race wiener designation the genotype of the patient so if we remember um the DCE, DCE thing, that's what that is. On the top are all of your clinically significant antigens and their blood group systems located at the very top here, highlighted in orange. Highlighted in green is the phenotype of that particular cell. So cell number one, this is that patient's phenotype. The positive, the plus sign, indicates that that person is positive for that particular antigen that it's under. The zero indicates that that person is negative for that particular antigen that it's under. On the right-hand side are your reactions. Reactions, what does that mean? It means when you're performing an antibody identification using this panel, you're adding two drops of patient plasma plus a drop of that red cell and then an enhancement media and then incubating it, washing it, adding AHG, and then reading a result. Or in this case, this is probably, this was probably done in gel or in solid phase. So technically they should have it written at the top here. I'm gonna write it on the top here. I'm gonna zoom in. This should say the phase at the top if we're being technical. So these are the reactions that are taking place in each of those gel wells. So in this case, those little gel columns have anti-IgG coded on it, right? So in the event that there is an IgG antibody coding the red cells of one of those donor cells, when it goes to spin it down, that anti-IgG actually attaches to the IgG molecule that is on the outside of the red blood cell. So when it attempts to get spun down, it will get caught in the column because there's a gluten. It's not able to travel down through the gel column. So in this event, cells one, two, three, and four all had reactions, meaning that there is an antibody that bound with one of these positive antigens on these donor red cells. And when it tried to go through the gel column, that anti-IgG bound to it, causing this positive reaction, and cell 11 as well. In this case, in order to do our rule outs, we have to look at cells that do not have a reaction. Why are we looking at the cells that do not have a reaction? Because, because that is where there are, the antibody is not doing anything. Clearly there's no antibody there. It's not reacting to any of the antigens there. So if there is a positive under that specific antigen and there's no antibody reacting to it, we can conclusively rule that out. If we're looking at cell number five, and there's a negative reaction. The way you would do your rule outs, I start from left to right, just like I read. You're looking for homozygous cells to rule out. So since there's no reaction in cell five, that means that the antibody is not present. That means that it's not reacting, that these antigens are not what that antibody is formed towards. So when you're doing your rule outs, you're crossing out the ones that are positive. The ones that are negative, I mean, there's no antibody there and there's no antigen there, so there's, there's nothing to rule out, right? We're gonna start with little e because this is, sorry, homozygous. Little e, we're gonna come back to this big C, little c, because that's heterozygous, but in this event, we can cross out little e, f. We don't really really worry about c, w, or v, only if we're seeing a pattern of reactivity that matches c, w, or v, but we can rule out chelano. We don't really worry about these kpa, kpb, jsa, jsb, but we'll just rule them out. Duffy b, jkb, p1, Lutheran B, M, and S, and Lewis A. Now we go to our next line and we do our rule outs here. We're not gonna touch 
these two because this is heterozygous so we'll get rid of a little c and we'll get rid of jka and that's that and let's go to the next line i'm going to come back to all of these heterozygous ones kel we can rule out kel heterozygously you can do three heterozygous rule outs for kel only because it's hard to find a patient or a donor that is chilano negative because so much of the population is chilano positive so we're gonna heterozygously rule that out there with that one and cell 10 down all right let's get rid of lewis b all right let's look at our next line finally get rid of duffy a I need an N and an S, right? Uh, Lutheran A is all negative all the way down, so clearly that's not it. In the presence of an anti-D, you can heterozygously rule out big C and big E. The reason why is because they're inherited on the same allele, and it's kind of hard to find cells that are homozygous for C and homozygous for E. One of the rules is being able to heterozygously rule it out. Heterozygous meaning like there is a big C and it's positive for big C and little C. So in this event, we can heterozygously rule it out. And then for E, it's the same thing on cell six, heterozygously rule that out. Oh, and we can get rid of here. I missed that. In this case, we like to, we've, we've essentially ruled out all antibodies. You could do more cells to two more heterozygous rule outs for big C and big E. But in this case, we have a pattern of reactivity here. And we have a pattern of reactivity here. We have one, two, three, four, five reactions where D is, and then we also have one, two, three, four, five, six reactions where D cells are not positive for D, so that means that we can conclusively say that this is an anti-D. Anti-D. That is how you would do an antibody rule out. Now, say you're on your exam and you're struggling to do rule outs, you're like, shit, I see this, but like, I can't, I, I, need to, I need to be able to rule out and keep track of things. My tip to you is to write on a piece of scratch paper, like say that this is your scratch paper over here. This is my scratch paper, okay? What you can do is you can take your pencil or whatever they give you, a pen or pencil, and you can write all of these major blood group antigens on that paper. So D, C, little c. So I literally just wrote all of these out. So now if I'm on line five and I see a c here, I can heterozygously rule that out. Then I see an e, I can homozygously, f, homozygous. I'm going across, right? For all intents and purposes here, I'm going to highlight this line, although you can't do this on the screen, but I'm doing it to show you guys. Again, starting from left to right, instead of writing it here, I'm going to cross out over here on my little sheet. So I have a C, I can heterozygous, just write, you know, homozygous rule out, heterozygous rule out, or whichever one suits you best. C and C, then we have E, goodbye, F, goodbye. So you see how I did that? Now, all I see is I need to rule out D, Kel, Duffy, A, J, K, K, you know what I mean? You can see which ones you have left to rule out. You can see which ones you have left to rule out. And now you can go and look on your thing here and continue to do your rule out. On the next line, line six, we have E heterozygous. We have C homo, little c homozygous. We have an E, a little e homozygous. We've already gotten rid of F. Um, J, K, A, let's get rid of it. Uh, C we got, E we got, F we got, Kel. So now you look and you see this pattern of reactivity. I'm going to use my highlighter again. This pattern of reactivity, we have 3 plus in cells 1 through 4 and then 11. And then over here, we have positive, D positive antigens in 1 through 4 and then cell 11. And what do we have left that we have not ruled out? We can conclusively rule in is your D. So in the event that you're on the exam, you can do it this way where you write out all of the major blood group antigens and then you're crossing out homozygously and heterozygously to see what you have left since you can't actually do it on the panel.